Hey guys, how's it going? I hope you're doing well and welcome to another solo fall baits video. In this one, we're going to be making a crank bait and we're going to be using a kind of a unusual material for lure making. And I'm of course talking about this uh, mystery board that I'm cutting right now. Well, it's not really a mystery. It's MDF, which stands for medium density fiber board, which is a basically an engineered wood. And um, I did some renovations around the house not too long ago and had a bunch of this stuff left uh, from the project. And um, I got curious and decided to test it out if it sinks or floats. And to my surprise, it actually floated. So I figured, you know what, I think this would probably make a pretty decent lure. So let's try it out. Let's see if I can make a decent lure out of this MDF board. So the MDF board that I got here is fairly thin, so I decided, you know what, I think I need a little bit more thickness on my lure, so I'm going to just glue these two halves together with 5-minute epoxy. Next I'll be using this uh, paper template to trace out the outlines of the crankbait so it's going to be easier for me to cut it out with the bandsaw. And also I'm going to be adding a lip slot here too. And by the way, this is actually based on a swim bait model that I'm planning to release later on in the springtime on my web shop. Uh, link is down below if you want to check out what I have there at the moment. But yeah, this is going to be a pretty awesome um, project. Uh, the overall shape is pretty similar, but I think the swim bait is going to be slightly fatter. Well, actually, I know for a fact that it's going to be slightly fatter. But uh, yeah. Look out for those later on in the spring, among other things that I have planned. Alright, next we're gonna head out to the bandsaw and do some cutting. And, you know, the weather here in, here in uh, Alberta has been really weird recently. It's going up and down all the time, so I was actually uh, lucky this day. It was really warm and I didn't have to wear any gloves, uh, which is always a nice thing. Although I did buy myself a heater this winter, which has been very very helpful uh, in the garage but anyways uh, this went pretty smoothly and i have to say cutting mdf is really no problem at all it's basically like cutting um what would i equate it to uh, maybe like something like soap which doesn't have any kind of grain or anything like that super easy if I'm cutting the lip slot with my bandsaw, I usually always like to do it when the lure is still kind of like a block like this. So when you do the cutting, it will be 90 degrees and dead accurate every single time, which is especially nice if you do a lot of these at a time, which I oftentimes do. I'm sure many of you already know that I like to do eye sockets on my baits and of course for that I need a pilot hole to make sure that it's accurate. So that's what I'm doing right now and just drilling through the bait and making sure that the um, eye socket is going to be dead accurate on both sides. Next we're going to smooth out the profile of the bait and get rid of those saw marks. And then I'm going to flip it 90 degrees and actually do the profile of the bait as well, or the upper profile. And uh, that'll be pretty easy with a thin bait like this, because you don't really have to uh, be super ac accurate. Although I think I'm pretty good at eyeballing things nowadays, so that's basically what I did. Now I'm going to start adding the hardware into the lure, but before that I need to drill some holes in here and I'm going to mark them out first. If you ever work with MDF, you know that it's a fairly soft material to work with, so I decided to try to eliminate any kind of drill bit drift when I drill the holes into the lure. So I decided to use an owl to poke some holes to make sure that that doesn't happen. Thank you. 
In the beginning, I mentioned that I was surprised uh, that MDF actually floated. And I was also kind of surprised how well it floated. So that means that I actually have to add some ballast weight into this lure to make sure that it actually runs uh, like it's supposed to. So that's what we're doing next. In the beginning I was thinking that I would actually make an internal wire harness for this bait, but then I figured, you know what, let me just save myself the trouble and I'm just going to use some screw eyes because they're going to work just as well. Once the superglue had dried, it was time to encase those lead holes with Bondo. When I started to work on this lure, I initially wasn't thinking of actually putting a hidden lip slot, but then I figured, you know what, I think it would look pretty nice on this lure, so I decided to just go ahead and make a hidden lip slot for this particular lure. So that's what we do next. I'm cutting up these uh, three millimeter thick cedar strips and inserting those into the lip slot in um, spots that I have deemed to be a good distance. Now that the little cedar strips are done, I'm going to insert them into the lip slot and I'm going to secure them with 5 minute epoxy. I've tried this before with um, uh, super glue, but it just doesn't seem to work uh, quite as well as uh, it does with epoxy. I think it has something to do with the fact that it's so runny, it goes into the fiber of the wood uh, much deeper and you don't get a very good adherence because of that. At least that's my theory. After giving uh, the epoxy roughly 30 minutes to cure completely, I'm just going to start shaving off the excess wood here and actually start rounding off the lure as well. And I don't know if any of you guys have ever worked with um, MDF before, but it's kind of like, it feels like you're working with compressed um, cardboard almost. So you definitely need a sharp knife to, to do this if you end up actually going this route. So now that the lure is nice and smooth, it's ready for some epoxy. So how I usually like to do this with um, the lures that have this hidden lip slot style is that I usually always have the uh, drying wheel stationary, it's not spinning, and I'm just going around the lip hole, uh, just making sure that none of the epoxy actually go into the hole, because obviously you don't want that. So, and after that, I'm just going to uh, do the whole process like I normally would. And on a side note, I must say that uh, this MDF really sucks in a lot of the epoxy, so you might actually have to do several layers if you end up using this material.
So, now the lure is completely encased in epoxy. I'm still going to scuff up the surface and make sure that the primer will adhere to the surface properly. Next I'm going to drill the eye sockets for the lure, but before that I need to determine the size of the eye. So in the very beginning I was thinking that I would make a carp of some sorts as the paint scheme for this uh, crankbait. But then I changed my mind and I decided to make a bluegill instead. So for that I need to make new set of stencils, which is going to be what's happening next. As I'm just using normal copy paper uh, to use as my stencil, or stencils, um, I'm going to cover them with packing tape to make sure that they actually last a little bit longer than uh, just a few sprays. Because I do intend to use this later on. Alrighty, let's start painting our bluegill. So first things first, I need to prime the surface with this white primer. The first actual color that I'm going to be shooting is going to be this okra, which is already a fairly light color, which I want, but I wanted it to be even lighter than this, so I'm going to reduce it quite a bit. Okay, so next I'm going to add a slightly darker shade of green to the backside, which will make this look a little bit more realistic. I mean, if you look any of the other bait fishes that are out there, usually you have this kind of a gradual shift in different shade of the main color that it is, like in here, a green. Next I'm going to paint and shade uh, some scales in a way that I for one have never seen done before. So what I have here is a piece of mesh that I got from a laundry bag. It's made from fabric instead of plastic, so it's much more stretchier and actually a lot more durable than the plastic tool that you can buy from craft stores like Michaels. So because it's stretchy, you can stretch it in a way that will make the mesh holes look like scales. However, you can't wrap the whole lure like you would normally see, because it will deform the mesh and make the scales look pretty horrible. To get around that problem, we need some way to stretch the mesh evenly. Hence, the piece of wood on the back of the lure, which will do exactly that. So normally when I would paint the scales, that would be the main color of them. However, this time around, uh, this gold is going to be the background color. And at this point, I don't think it really matters what angle you spray the paint on. Uh, I just paint it head on. And then uh, we're going to switch it up a little bit and come from a different angle with a different color.
Now that the gold has been sprayed, I'm going to use this pearlescent white to make the scales for the belly. Alrighty, next we're going to start shading our scales. So, I'm actually going to do this in two different tones of green, which will add to the realism of the paint job. So, what you want to do is, you want to come from a fairly low angle from behind the lure. This will make the paint land on the front end of the scale, leaving the back exposed with the previous color, which is going to be gold in my case. All right, moving on, we're going to be painting the bar pattern that the bluegill has next. And I'm just going to use black for that. When I was looking for inspiration on the internet, how a bluegill should look like, a lot of them have this orange blotch behind their gills, so that's what we're painting next. At this point when I was looking at the lure, I was like, hmm, this needs something a little extra. So I, again, like I said, I went to the uh, internets and search on um, some photos of uh, bluegills and I noticed a lot of them have this kind of like a pearlish uh, violet hue on their bars so that's what I'm gonna paint next. Alright, next we're gonna move on to the head details and I'm gonna start by adding this shading on the background which is going to be black of course and as you can see, I've already done the mouth part, and that's basically what everything else is going to look like, more or less. Now that the head details are pretty much finished, I'm going to be adding a little bit more depth into them by adding some uh, green into the inner parts of the gills. So a blue gill wouldn't be a blue gill without, you know, having some blue in the gill, so that's what we're adding next. And of course, uh, this blue gill definitely deserves that little spot of black uh, on top of their gills, so that's what we're adding next. And now we're going to move on to the fins. And I'm going to start it off by uh, spraying just a little bit of orange on the connection point of the fin. And after that, I'm going to be spraying some yellow as a background color. For the fin rays, I decided to use this um, kind of a very dark brown, and I think that suits the theme pretty well.
I wanted to add a little bit more detail to this uh, particular paint job that I would normally do. So I've actually decided to extend the mouth from each side and connect them in the middle. Totally unnecessary, yet pretty cool, I think. So now at this point, the paint job is pretty much done. I just need to polish a few areas and kind of make them look a little bit neater, mainly the mouth area underneath the chin. One last thing before I'm going to be clear coating this thing with um, true coat epoxy. I'm actually going to just uh, glue in the eyes at this point. And these are actually homemade eyes, so you can't buy these anywhere. So you just have to make them yourself. While I'm waiting for the uh, five minute epoxy, the cure, I'm going to go ahead and make the lip for the lure. And I decided to go with this kind of a rounder shape uh, this time around. It's not completely round, it's kind of like, um, I guess, a, a teardrop or a water drop or whatever. And uh, yeah, I've had a lot of success with this sort of uh, design before, so might as well go with something you know. So now that the lip is done, I can move on to clear coating the lure. And like I mentioned before, I'm using True Coat Epoxy still. And um, I think I'm going to leave a link in the description box so you can order your own uh, from their website. I'm no way affiliated with um, True Coat in any way. I just like their product a lot. I usually give the True Coat Epoxy a couple of days to cure completely and now I can actually glue in the lip, uh, which I'm doing with 5 minute epoxy. All right, guys, the lure is finished now. I think I did a fairly decent job with this, uh, considering this is my first ever bluegill uh, paint job. Of course, there's a few things that I, you could always tweak here and there and make it better, but you know, there's always next time. And for what it's worth, I think I did a pretty decent job on the first go. Before I leave you guys, it's time for the mandatory swim test. And as you can see, hopefully, the lure is still fairly buoyant, which is really surprising to me because I always was under the impression that MDF is really uh, heavy and it almost sinks. But I guess I was wrong. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like the video if you did. Subscribe to the channel for more content like this. And you can support me on Patreon too if you want. I usually post um, stuff regarding upcoming projects uh, on the channel and um, other goodies. Um, yeah, and of course you can swing by my web shop, Solofoil Baits, and uh, get yourself some goodies for the spring. So yeah, I'll see you guys on the next one, whenever that is.